Boxing Ego here. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon on the top of your screen to get notified when the latest new content drops. One. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button and subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest. Now, Canelo versus Golovkin. Great fight, September 16th. We don't have the actual venue at the moment. But when they were at the T-Mobile Arena for Canelo Chavez Jr., it was officially announced. You can find pictures floating on the internet. And De La Hoya recently spoke with ESPN regarding how the fight was made, how it came up, uh, about. And I want to talk about that, what he said. De La Hoya says, and I quote, All these fighters are using the old model that Mayweather left behind where it's all about money. And therefore, no fights are getting done. It's different now. I made this fight, this Canelo and Golovkin fight, for the sport, for the fans. Yes, there's a lot of money in this fight, but I could have made four smaller fights with Canelo that are not as risky as the Golovkin fight. But I was a fighter myself. I understand what the fans want, and therefore, I made it happen. I understand the business, and most importantly, I understand what the fans need. He went on to say, I promise exciting fights, upsets, and that's what we are getting. There's no stopping us. I'm not going to tell my matchmakers to take it easy. There's too much action. I'm very, very bullish on growing the sport and keeping it alive and making it more exciting and more exciting fights and building the next stars, the next champion on our ESPN series. Right? So, the statements sound good. He says boxing was in the hiatus and now it's back. It's bigger and better than ever. All sports, you have ups and downs. All of them. And boxing has had its ups and downs. He, he went on to say, it's a roller coaster. Right now, we're living in a great moment for boxing, and we will for a long time. So that's from fighter slash promoter, turn promoter, Oscar De La Hoya. Now, I keep it a buck with you guys. I keep it real. And what De La Hoya is saying, it sounds good on paper. However, I don't... Obviously, I'm down for anything that's good for boxing. Me, personally. I don't work for HBO, Showtime, PBC, Golden Boy. I work for me, right? And... and I get a paycheck. It doesn't have any of their names at it. It says Google, right? YouTube. I file taxes, right? So shout out to all the fans that have supported me. But what De La Hoya is saying, it, it sounds, like I said, it sounds great. But first of all, there's it, so much I want to say on this. I'm getting sick of HBO and De La Hoya and Golden Boy constantly bringing up Floyd Mayweather, Mayweather Pacquiao, like it, it's just, it, it gets repetitive, okay, the fight didn't live up to your expectations, I knew what the fight was going to be, so I really got my money's worth, could they have promoted the fight better, yes, you know what I mean, instead of closing off to the public, or um, the undercard, you had a couple names, like Vasil Lomachenko, but he wasn't fighting nobody, you know what I mean, they didn't have any mega fights on the card, right, so it could have been better in terms of the build-up and stuff like that, but I knew what the fight was going to be, the outcome of the actual fight, and that's exactly what I thought, Pacquiao trying, Pacquiao failing, at what he always fails at, good boxers, closing distance, against good boxers with ring savvy, ring IQ, and stuff like that, but De La Hoya and HBO, they keep throwing this narrative around, like, Floyd Mayweather left this blueprint behind. First of all, this this is why I gotta I call I gotta call a spade a spade. Because Canelo, up until this Golovkin fight, and even the Chavez Jr. fight, he just fought Amir Khan and Liam Smith. Right? He didn't say, you know what? I gotta do what's right for boxing. That 117, 111 scorecard by Levi Martinez was some bullshit. I didn't win that fight versus Edison Lada, or I didn't win by that wide of a margin. Let me rematch Lada. But that's not what Team Canelo said. Instead, they said, we don't ever want to rematch him. His style is not appealing. They also went on, and Team Canelo's been on record. You guys can Google this. They said they didn't want to fight guys like Willie Monroe because that style doesn't make sense. Now, I'm not saying Canelo has to fight Willie Monroe. I mean, Golovkin already beat him. You know what I mean? I don't think it'll be a massive fight. But to publicly declare that you will not fight certain styles or give certain rematches, we know you're the A-side, you're the face of boxing. But to me, it's like De La Hoya, he got it right with this one. Everybody wants Canelo Triple G, including the venues, right? 
So he's using it kind of as, as a catalyst to like save face and be like, aha, I told you I was saving boxing. It's me, I, I did it. But I don't look at it like that because as great of a fight as this is, you got to look at it. One, I think Golovkin and team, credit to Tom Loeffler, credit to Abel Sanchez, and credit to Golovkin. They put an immense amount of pressure on Canelo. That's a fact. They put pressure on him by constantly staying in touch with the media. I mean, last year, all of last year, especially around the, uh, the fall, August, September-ish, that's all I was hearing about was vacated belt by Canelo. Canelo drops his belt. Golovkin, hashtag give me my belt. Abel Sanchez saying redhead is scared. You know what I'm saying? So... De La Hoya, again, I mean, it makes sense from, from a business perspective. Now you, you're going to be like, oh, yeah, we did it. We did it. We we helped boxing thrive, which, again, I'm not complaining about Canelo Golovkin. This is one of the best fights and definitely one of the biggest fights this year, right? So I have no complaints about the fight, but it's just funny to hear De La Hoya make these, these claims like, oh, everyone's following the Mayweather blueprint. But what was Canelo doing fighting Amir Khan? I talked to Amir Khan. I have the interview, and he told me, Initially, in negotiation, he was on a year-plus layoff after fighting Chris Algieri. He wanted to fight Canelo at a catchweight, something that was more suitable since he was coming up from welterweight. He wanted to fight at 153, 152, or something like Mayweather. And he said that Golden Boy said, no can do. No rehydration clause, we're the A-side, and no catchweight. Either come up to, or actually a catchweight, but our catchweight of 155, you come up to that or you don't have a fight. Khan being desperate for whatever reason for this big money fight and massive payday. He was trying to uh, lasso Floyd or Pacquiao. That didn't work. So he took it and he got knocked out for it. You know what I mean? Too big, too strong. He did good at first and then it was just, he couldn't make any mistakes. You know what I mean? With his chin and with his style and the size of Canelo, they said he, he says after the fight, Canelo weighed like 183 or 190 or something crazy. So that's all it took, one shot. Canelo could be down three, four rounds and still get him out of there because he had the size. So De La Hoya, he wasn't saying that then. You know what I'm saying? So it's just, it's kind of ironic that now he's using this as a springboard to be like, yeah, everyone's following the Mayweather blueprint and the model Mayweather left behind. I'm doing this for fans. But what about Canelo versus um, Liam Smith? I never even... Honestly, this is bad. This is bad with me as a as a journalist, as a reporter, vlogger. I covered a fight with with Liam Smith's brother, and he was there, I believe, when I went to the Andre Ward Paul Smith fight and covered that. And I didn't even know they were related. I didn't even know who the dude was. You know what I'm saying? So we'll explain that fight. So now that Golden Boy got it right, they got it done. Again, no complaints at all. Now all of a sudden, De La Hoya is like doing this these these uh these interviews like yeah i could have done we could have made four smaller canelo fight you kind of did you know what i'm saying the amir khan fight the fight with um, liam smith so like i don't know it's just i can't i can't understand when people try to act like saints when when they're they don't have they act like they don't have skeletons in their closet i guess which is a bit bothersome like, I, I do think, I mean, De La Hoya is right. He could have made four smaller fights, but the amount of pressure that Team Golovkin put on Canelo, it would look extremely bad if he kept fighting Liam Smith. And, you know what I mean? People want to see Canelo in there with a threat. You know what I mean? If he wasn't fighting Jamal Charlo, Danny Jacobs, or, or Golovkin, the guy who's been, like, kind of chastising him. You know what I mean? Then... It, it just, to me, it, it, it's funny to me because you look at it, Chavez Jr., who came off a long layoff, fought in December, went to a decision with a guy like Dominique Bridge in Mexico. You know what I mean? The guy, Bridge, I forgot where he's from, but he's not from Mexico like, like Chavez Jr. He went the distance with him, called out Canelo, then they made it at a catch weight that most people probably thought, I mean, that, that was the talk of the town, the buildup of the fight is, can Chavez Jr. even make weight? And then he makes weight. But obviously that he sacrificed all the years of abusing his body and ballooning up. It, it came crashing down because he had nothing. I mean, he fought a, a style of fight where he, he looked horrible. You know what I mean? More so than others. You know what I mean? And that's who Canelo just fought. And it was a lackluster fight. Canelo did his thing. But Chavez Jr. was clearly tapped. He didn't look good. 
I'm not taking away from the skill set, but I, I, I've said this before. Canelo admitted that he was tired and you seen Chavez Jr. was not able to do anything in any round and lose every single round. So that's you have to put that in your pipe and smoke it. Like that shows you something, right? When Canelo post fight admits that he was tired, but Chavez wasn't active enough, he wasn't attacking enough to the point where he could even expose that. You know what I mean? Punching a bigger man. This is why people thought it could be interesting. Punching a bigger man like Chavez Jr. It takes his toll on you. You hit him with your best shit and he's still there. And I kept comparing it to Conor McGregor versus Nate Diaz. But the difference is Nate Diaz wasn't drained and he has a ton of heart. And he, he's a true fighter. So even though he was getting marked up or bloody or got knocked to the mat, he gets back up and he's still trying to, to rough you up. Chavez clearly didn't and couldn't do that for whatever reason. But for De La Hoya to say, oh, yeah, like, just make it like, like they said, the, they're so different from Mayweather. I just, I got to, I got to expose it and I got to talk about it because, again, you just came off of fighting Chavez Jr., which was a highly disappointing fight. It's not really Canelo's fault that it was disappointing, but they knew what they were doing with the strategy in terms of the weight, right? And that's why people in the buildup were like, can he even make this weight? He's going to be a skeleton, ha-ha, skeletor right then before that he fought liam smith then amir khan then he fought james kirkland off of a year plus layoff who was coming off of a war with uh glenn tapia and i heard and i have a source in the industry that you guys all know but i'm not going to reveal names and they said it was in the contract that james kirkland could not use ann wolf because people were wondering like why he just had a great fight with glenn tapia why is he all of a sudden dropping ann wolf again and i heard that was behind closed doors that was part of the contract you know what i mean so i mean for de la hoya to now be like oh we did it for the fans okay but what about liam smith what about this you know what i mean what about demetrius boo boo andrade you know what i mean i would rather watch the, if, if you said amir khan liam smith or james kirkland or one of the charlo brothers or demetrius andrade versus canelo at 54 guess what i would pick it wouldn't be any of the people he just fought. It wouldn't have been Liam Smith, Amir Khan, or James Kirkland. Me personally. Amir Khan is a welterweight. Liam Smith, never heard of him. James Kirkland, long layoff, kind of chinny. You know what I mean? So for De La Hoya to kind of be on the horn, like, yeah, we did it. And we're not following the Mayweather model. I just find it pretty hypocritical. But that's just my standpoint on it. I'm glad the fight is happening, but I do think the pressure from Team Golovkin, and shout out to them because they, they kept they kept a bug in the ear, you know what I mean? They kept a message out in the public. And I think that kind of, it's kind of like Earl Spence versus Kell Brook. It gets, boxing is not playing anymore. You know what I'm saying? And I suggest fans take heed to these, these two fights. De La Hoya making Canelo and Triple G, right? And then also Spence and Kell Brook. If we as a consumer put our foot down and say, this is what needs to happen next, we can hurt them. We can hurt the, the companies and to the point where they have to make the fights we want to see. You know what I mean? And I think those are both great fights. And go, both, we're getting them this year. And they're both examples of when the public outcry becomes so great, you can just act like you don't hear it. You know what I mean? It's just like, let's say... Let's say you're sleeping and then some somebody's banging at your door. I mean, are you gonna pretend you don't hear it? And they're just like banging louder, boom, 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 boom. And you pretend you don't hear it, go back to sleep or try to, boom, boom, boom. You at, at some point you gotta answer that door, and that's what it's getting with all the social media, with channels like mine, with comments and boxing forums and stuff. Our voice gets louder, and that's why I, I always make videos like this and, and expose the real and talk about how I feel and stuff because I, I want to grow the sport of boxing too. You know what I mean? And fights like Canelo versus Golovkin, you see the you see the reaction and response from people because it is a great fight. So I'm not taking anything away. Golden Boy got it done. But it's just funny to me because they're they're De La Hoya is in this ESPN interview and he's like, hey, I know we're making a lot of money, but I could have made four smaller fights with Canelo. That are not risky but that's kind of what you've been doing up until you know what i'm saying what's canelo's last tough tough fight Cotto, maybe 
on paper, but I knew what type of fight. I, I even did a seven reason on that. I knew Canelo would beat him. He's too big, too young, too fresh, stuff like that. Cotto's solid, but he, you know what I mean? He's not, he's not going to be so solid against somebody at this point of his career who's, who, who's probably going to outweigh him 15, 17 pounds, stuff like that. Someone who's very skilled. Canelo's a beast. So I'm not trying to uh, extend this video on much longer, but that's just my thoughts. It's just funny because I'm, I'm getting sick of people blaming Mayweather for personal choice. Even if that's what you believe, let's say you believe Floyd left his blueprint. It doesn't apply to other people because let's say, well, I'll just use a name out of the hat, like Danny Garcia. Danny Garcia fighting Rod Salka, that has nothing to do with Mayweather. He hasn't accomplished what Mayweather has, has accomplished. So why should he be doing the same things that a person who's more accomplished has done? You know what I mean? He hasn't done, not even just resume-wise, but just the accomplishments of Floyd. The Floyd has all of the highest grossing pay-per-views, live gate venue um, records and all this stuff with Pacquiao's fights with De La Hoya, several million plus pay-per-view homes. So how can any of these other fighters, because for whatever reason, De La Hoya still seems salty and he keeps blaming Floyd, but you got to look at it. What Floyd is able to do he, he pretty much has seniority into the game like you know what i mean and other fighters can't say that like even even canelo canelo doesn't have the the numbers he's a popular fighter but he doesn't have he lost first of all he lost to floyd and he doesn't have all of the numbers because he hasn't been around as long right especially in america so he doesn't have all the accolades floyd has yet i still see a lot of these fighters like again i keep saying it Everybody wants to be Money Mayweather without going through the Pretty Boy Floyd stage, and it doesn't work like that. You know what I mean? You could look at Money Mayweather, like him fighting Conor McGregor. Most people don't give Conor a shot. I'll be the first to tell you that. I still want to see it because it's a circus, and Conor can talk his ass off, and Floyd can talk his ass off, so the buildup will be fun. And I do think if Conor McGregor doesn't go in as a boxer, he could, with his power, with his size, I'm not saying he can beat Floyd, but he can maybe make it interesting on a 40-year-old Floyd being awkward and trying to do like a Madonna style of fight, you know what I mean, without kicks, you know what I mean, just try to rough him up and, um, you know what I mean, he could get cut, stuff like that, it's boxing, anything could happen, I, I just wouldn't say he would be the favorite, but again, people forget about, what about the pretty boy Floyd, what about all the times he, before that, where he's fighting Zab Judas and called out Shane Mosley and Costa Zoo, so it's, it's just crazy to hear De La Hoya talk about this, yes, he did get it right, they made the fight with Canelo Triple G, but it might not have been big, as big, but Triple G, it sounded like his team really wanted to fight last year, and you're just talking about, hey, we made it this year, yeah, but you also made a couple fillers, in between that, like fights that really didn't need to happen where they weren't against the best. So I'm getting sick of people using Mayweather as the excuse or scapegoat for what they do in their career. Oh, but, oh, we, we just want the most cat. You haven't done what he's done. You know what I'm saying? You haven't even accomplished half of the feats. You don't have the live gate numbers. People aren't as interested. You don't have a million plus followers on every social platform. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you can't compare that. To, you can't compare the two. It's just like a job. If I start a job and I've been there for, let's say, 60 days, and then someone else has seniority, they've been there for 19 years, I mean, they might have a couple of extra perks, more vacation time, maybe they get to park closer, maybe they have a bigger office. That's what happens when you have seniority, when you've been doing it longer, when you've been showing and proving through layoffs, through, and you've, you've stood and lasted the test of time. That's what happens. That's why they, that's why it's called seniority. You've been here longer. You you earned your stripes and stuff like that. So it's just it's funny hearing De La Hoya talk about like, oh yeah, we did it. I made the fight for the fans. Like, okay, why'd you make Amir Khan? Why'd you make Liam Smith for your own personal gain? Easy fights that for for Canelo because you gotta look at it. And this is why I said I did a video. Seven reasons Canelo should versus Amir Khan should not happen. I knew the outcome of that fight because you gotta look at it. Amir Khan, moving up from welterweight, he has decent power, but he doesn't have like, I wouldn't say his top three power, you know what I mean? I wouldn't say he, he hits as hard as Keith Thurman, Kell Brook, Errol Spence, Pacquiao, none of those top guys. Probably not even a Porter, you know what I'm saying? So 
he has decent power. So you mean to tell me he's going to take a year off, move up, even if his frame could support it, and have the power to stop Canelo, who Cotto, who's been fighting over 150 since Yuri Foreman, couldn't hurt Canelo, right? I just didn't see that happening. So that means he can't knock him out. He would have to outbox him. And we know that even guys like Edison Lada, who some people thought Canelo lost to, they had the scores pretty lopsided, 117 to 111. You know what I'm saying? So it's hard to outbox him and win on the scorecards if you can't hurt him too. You know what I mean? Like Mayweather just left no mystery. He left no doubts. You can't deny and let, like I said, CJ Ross tried to and said it was a draw. That's why she retired after that because she knew her dumb ass was stupid for that, right? But unless you have a performance like that, it's going to be hard to beat Canelo because chances are he can probably hurt you more and he can box too. And if you can't hurt him, he's the, the popular guy, the A-side, then the judges are probably will side with you. But Golovkin's a little bit different because he has threatening power. He can hurt Canelo. You know what I'm saying? So that's just my two cents. Let me know what you guys think of De La Hoya's comments. That's my breakdown on it. Drop it in the comment section. Make sure you share the video, like the video as always. Hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video, Ego signing off. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing.